Bravo Studio 2.0 introduced a feature that will open endless possibilities for us as app creators. I'm talking about user authentication. Welcome to AppMonster. My name is Jonas, and in this episode, we're going to create a login screen, a reset password, and a sign up screen. First, let's have a look at our Figma file. As always, you can find the Figma file I'm using in this episode in the description below. We have a login screen, which has the page login tag. The page tags have been added in this release. We have a container tag, which we already know with the aspect ratio screen. So this means that these screens have the same size as the screen of our smartphone. I added a little icon here just to make this more appealing. Of course, this isn't needed. You can just simply delete that out. But the interesting parts here are the login button, which has the action login Firebase email password tag in here. So we know action tags already from, for example, open URLs, but this one is a login and using the Firebase email and password method. We're going to get through that when we're having a close look at Firebase. But what you need to know for now, this is the only tag for logins that works at the moment. Same thing for the password and the email input. We already know the component input from our forms, but this time we have the password and the email. We need to clarify that for Bravo to know which is which and to then authenticate that with the database. A similar thing happens here in reset password, only that this time the reset button has the action reset password and the input field is input email again. The sign up page also has the input email here. So the input email and password, but this time the action tag register. Firebase email password is the same thing like in login. So we have the email and the password, which will be used to authenticate the user. And then lastly, I have a screen which will only represent the actual app. So after we logged in, we are going to open the app. This one also has a little logout icon here. The logout icon has another action tag, this time not log in or reset, but log out. And Firebase is just the type of authentication we're using again. What I also quickly want to show you is the prototyping tool here in Figma. The important thing is to have this play icon here in the home screen. So the login will just be an overlay over there. So when the user is already logged in, we always start with the home screen and the user doesn't have to log in again. And as you can see, I just linked the buttons that don't have any action tags like the action logout tag, for example. They are just linked to their respective screens and then the back button is also, of course, linked to the login screen where it should lead. Now, speaking of Firebase, let's have a look at that. Firebase is a backend service from Google. You can imagine it like this huge Airtable that has all the data we stored inside that, but this time specifically for our users. So we have one column for the email and one column for the password, for example. Firebase offers some extra features for developers, which is exactly what we're going to use now. Before you start to use Firebase, Make sure to take a look at the pricing because some teams may not be able to afford that for in the long run. You need to create a Firebase account, which is free and you pay as you go. So when more users come to your app, the pricing will increase. To use Firebase, we're going to enter the console. Here, all of your projects will be displayed. We're going to create a new one for this app. So create a new project. We're just going to name that login system and then click on continue. 
Here you have the option to use Google Analytics. I'm just going to disable this because we won't need it for this small example and Google already has enough analytics about our users. So we're going to click here, create a project and this might take a little time. I'm going to use that time to just say that Firebase is currently the only option that you have in Bravo Studio. I'll make sure to create a new tutorial once some other options are available. Okay, so our project is now ready and we can click on continue and this will open our project here. So we can see we're here on the Spark plan. This means it's free for now. And now what we want to do is create the authentication so all of our users can actually use the tags we just used in Figma. So click here on authentication or you can also click on develop and then authentication. And this will display a list of our users, which of course is empty at the moment. Now define a sign in method. The only option we have here is email and password. I'm sure Bravo will add some more in the future. But for now, let's add this email and password. And we're not going to enable the passwordless sign in because in our Figma file, we always need to have the email input. So click here on save. And this has now enabled the email and password for our users. Now we can have a quick look at the templates. Here is where you can define the emails that get sent back and forth, for example, the password request. And you can change if you don't like this, this domain, you can change that. But you have to verify that this is your domain. This works exactly like it would for Google Analytics. This is just to show Google, I own this domain. So you just have to add a little script to your website. We're not going to do that here because this is not necessary for our example. The next step is to get the Google services file. This is a JSON file, which we'll then import into Bravo Studio. This will make the connection between the two services. To do that, we're going back to our project overview, which has these options where we can get our files. We're going to click the Android now, and I'm going to first register this app for Bravo Vision so we can test that out before going into the actual publication files but I'm also going to show that to you in the end of this video. So for Bravo Vision, we need to take the package name of Bravo Vision. So this is com.codelesslabs.app. We can leave the app nickname and the signing certificate empty, but we're going to register this app now. This will make the file ready for us. We're going to hit download here and this will save it on our computer to later upload it then to Bravo Studio. Okay, so I just saved it here and now we can click on next. We can also skip this step and then continue to console. We could now add an app here and then select the iOS version, for example, if you wanted to test that on the iOS version of Bravo Vision as well, or then later for your publication files. Our next step is going to happen in Bravo Studio. So we're going to open that now. Here in Bravo Studio, we're going to import the design in Figma that we just created. Hit on import and this should load our project. This is like all the other times you have already done that. But we see all the screens from our Figma file. And what's really comfortable, instead of what we did, for example, in the blog app in one of my earlier videos, we can now completely ignore this screen setup. We don't have to bind our designs. What we want to do is go to settings and now activate the Firebase login. Here you have a couple of options where you can upload the file that we just created in Firebase. So we have the Bravo Vision files. This is for testing and this is for the final app. So what I just showed you 
when you create a different file for, for the publishable app files. I'm just going to upload the file. So I'm going to select our Google services file here and then open that. You can see that it's uploaded here. We're also going to activate send email address verification so the user gets notified when he registers. We are now finished with setting up our login with Firebase and Bravo Studio. So now we can just check if it worked in Bravo Vision. So I just opened our project here. We can see that we're already here in the login screen. So it's not showing our home screen, but the login screen instead, because we're not logged in yet. And we can just test that out right now. But of course it shouldn't work because we don't have any users yet. So a password with eight characters. And when we log in, we'll see that it will return an error message. Login failed, there's no user record, of course, but we see all types of error messages. So if the password is not long enough and if this is not an email, so these are all handled here by Bravo Studio. Now let's create a first user. So we're going to hit the sign up page here. And now we have the option to enter our email and our password. The password needs to be eight characters. So this is of course a very insecure password, but we're going to use that for our demo here. And I'm going to type in my email address so we can have a look at the actual reply email that we'll get sent from Firebase. So appmonsterapp at gmail.com. You can write me an email if you want and hit sign up. This has created our user and also in the same step locked us in. So now we can see that I mixed something up in the Figma file here. That's not a big problem but we see we have our home screen and the interesting part, the log out button. So when we click here on log out, so we can't go back because the user authentication runs out as soon as the logout button is pressed. So now let's test the login. So with the same email as before and our very insecure password, and logging in directs us directly to the home screen. So last thing we need to do is test the password request. So we want to reset our password for this email address request reset. And now we see an email has been sent to us. Let's have a look at that in my mailbox. Here in my mailbox, we can see the reset email. So Firebase just inserts our project name here. This will make sense for your app, of course, but I didn't write anything there. And then the email of our account. And then this very long link where we can reset the password. As you can see, if the user does not react to this email, Firebase just ignores this request and nothing happens. But we can click on that link and it directs us to this Firebase website. So we're not resetting the password in our app, but in this web browser instead. We're going to have a look at the Firebase console now. And when I hit refresh, we should see our new user that we just registered with our email. So now we have the option to reset the password manually, disable the account or delete the account, of course. We're not gonna do that here, but what I wanna show you instead is if you have an app that's restricted to only a few users, you can add the users manually here and then just leave out the sign up page in your app. So only the users that you want to have on your platform will be here in this list and nobody gets added. So you could just click add user and these are the same input fields that we have in our app. This is most of the login process already implemented. 
what we're going to have a look at now is how to set this up for your publishable app files. So we just entered this for our Android Bravo Vision here. But if you want to publish that, you need something different. You would just go back to the overview and then select your platform again. So we could go for Android. But this time, instead of the Bravo Vision app package name, you would have to write your own app package name. You get that Android package when you click here on publish and then your package name here. So this would be entered into Firebase. Same thing is here with the iOS publication. When you finish the process I showed in the beginning in your Firebase console, then you'll get a new JSON file that you can then insert here again, but this time you're not dropping the file in the Firebase for Bravo Vision section here. So not these two, but your final app file instead. Let's say you would want to have a different list for your final app. So these would be just test accounts and then you want a different user base for your final app. You would just have to create a new project and then go through all the steps again. Because if we just add our final app through this, all the users that sign up in our final app will also be inserted into this list of users. I remember when I did my first authentication system in PHP and as you can maybe tell, this is way easier. But let's just take a look at all the opportunities that you have now that you have authentication in your app. You could start user profiles where you save specific things for your users. There's already a great example for a to-do list where every user has their own to-do list. That's a great example on the Bravo Studio website. This is the feature that will really make your app personal to the user. Before that, we couldn't store any information, but now you can save progress for the user and let them manage their own profile or whatever you want to do. I'm really looking forward to see all the apps that you are going to create with a Firebase login. As always, you can find the Figma file that we used in this episode below the video. Feel free to duplicate it and use it for your own login system. If you want to get the most out of Bravo Studio, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, visit the Bravo community on Spectrum or just write a comment. Thank you for watching and keep Bravo rising.